This issue of rubber stamp uh, is something that comes up every time. Do you feel that a lot of people misunderstand what the issue of rubber stamping is in the context of the, the relationship between the legislature and the executive uh, arm of government? A lot of people feel that the more the fights, yeah, the more he feels they're working. But if, if bills are passed on that way, then it's a rubber stamp. Do we really understand what the issue or the idea of rubber stamping is? Let me proceed from a brilliant statement that um, Honorable Abi made. That uh, we look at what the president wants to do. Mm. I doubt if I have ever seen a blank rubber stamp. Rubber stamps bear impressions mm. Mm. that you now transfer on another object. Right. So what are you bringing to the National Assembly? You know, I did a study. The first time Nigeria borrowed externally was in 1964 to build a dam. And the parliament followed through. You know, when you talk about the National Assembly, apart from lawmaking, and representation, you talk about oversight, and you talk about control of public funds, transparency. Why, Mr. President, are you going to borrow? Mm. How does it translate to benefits to the people? How are we going to pay back? You know, so we have, we studied this in school, checks and balances. And let me say this, Honorable Alavi said, they have been misjudged. And as a public relations practitioner, I love the fact that he made reference to public relations. That is correct, because the people who should benefit, really, from democracy at the high end are suffering. So they won't appreciate what you do in those chambers until these activities translate to welfare to them. Mm -hmm. Section 14, subsection 2 of the Nigerian Constitution of Amendment says that the security and the welfare of the citizens shall be the primary purpose of government. So I expect that the National Assembly, whether by rubber stamp or whatever, we queue behind the president that we must deal with insecurity in Nigeria. I did a study on parliaments across the world, the best parliaments across the world. If you look at Denmark, the parliament is called Folkenten which means the people's thing. It's about the people. You look at Switzerland. Switzerland has about 246 members. They have a bicameral legislature too. And the focus is on education. You look at Finland. You look, you know, you check. So the National Assembly is the unique element in democracy. You don't have another military system of government. So I expect, and I must commend our president and commander in chief of the armed forces, Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu, on his stakeholders' engagement. And if it is sustained, we must make a success of this tenure. So the people are waiting. And let me em emphasize representation. We have 109 senators, 360 House of Rest members to represent constituencies. So how does development come? beyond the uh, Abuja structure and everything, your constituencies want to benefit. Mm -hmm. And there are key areas now. The economy. Okay, Ashwaju said on the day of inauguration that subsidy is gone. How can the National Assembly step in now mm -hmm. to ensure that the right support is given? Recall the Petroleum Industry Act. Look at the provisions that may not favor us. You know, I mean, it, it, this, these are issues that we are talking about. How do you now move Nigeria to the next level? I've listened to our president tell uh, Akwabio and all of them that we are going to walk and walk together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and like he said, I must give this to the Knight Assembly. A lot of bills were translated into act, into law, and it is still ongoing. There were, there were some on the table of the president, the uh, president Mabudu, former president, that he did not, Ashwaju is now endorsing. So if we focus on energy, for instance, it helps us with the industrialization move we need in the country. Look at this subsidy remover. Now people are beginning to realize, and some of us have been saying that some neighboring countries are just feeding fat on this country. 
and there are some crooks who just share about seven trillion annually. So why wouldn't they sponsor terrorism? So you need to cut off all these excesses. When you talk about wealth, your revenue drive is important. And if you have leakages in your revenue drive, the journey will be too far for you. So we block all those loopholes, attract direct foreign investment by you know, limiting the insecurity in the land, because it's highly exact that we eliminate insecurity. So that people, Nigeria is a beautiful brand uh, and bride in the business environment. You talk of our oil, we have the largest deposit of proven gas in Africa. Yeah. We have the second largest deposit of bitumen in the world. We have various, you know, blessings that we can tap into. So my advice is that from what I'm seeing, in fact, you can see the walls of opposition crumbling gradually. It's no longer, you can see, you know, personalities from different parties coming together. In fact, I was monitoring the Yohanes, they are already engaging their in-law, Akwabio. <laughs> <laughs> so you see the Northwest. So we need to balance all this. And they are asking for additional states. So the National Assembly will look at it. Does the South is the South additional state? There are five states there now. Give them the sixth one. You know, we have two bridges now going into Anambra State. It would be a bad idea if we have two states coming up. You know, these are issues. How do we uh, ensure that the ports are active in the southeastern part of the country? Now we have discovered all in the northern part of the country. The commonwealth of this nation is for the common good. And like I said earlier, we may be differentiated by the caps we wear and our dresses and languages, <clears throat> but the needs of this nation, as long as we are together, is summarized by what we have in section 15 of our constitution that, say, that talks about the motto of Nigeria, unity, faith, peace, and progress. So when we bring that sense of unity, objectivity, balance, and equity, then we can have faith in the project Nigeria. And when you have faith in the project, you can only support that project. So agitations are dim uh, diminished, we have peace, and we can progress. We need to progress definitely as a nation. How can our refineries work? I agree with Honorable Alabi that the main job is the oversight. You need to go out there, look at what is being done, and then let's also see, and he admitted the issue of uh, the, uh, the costly system of government that we have in the country. The National Assembly has the power also to say, let's have all these agencies. What are their relevance? You know, can we bridge them? Can we bring all this together? Because right now, Nigeria must step into the mode of prudence. If we are going to make any sense from the new curve we have. So once again, I want to congratulate the National Assembly and to say that all eyes are on them. And what is the assignment? Right. It's in Section 4 of our Constitution, the peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria. And I recommend that you can study some of the templates I mentioned here, particularly Denmark and Switzerland. So we, you, you represent the people. And I look forward to a season where the National Assembly members will be delivered from dependence economy, where you have to be sponsoring people in your locality. Develop people like Sheikh Zayed did in the UAE and uh, Lee Kuan Yew did in Singapore. Develop people and you won't have people coming to collect money for naming ceremony and the different kinds mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. that we place unnecessary burden on mm -hmm. you. And I think we are at the precipice now of becoming a great nation. Right. I, I believe that uh, Honorable Alabi would like to react to some <laughs> of the things that you mentioned because he was smiling uh, just now, especially with regards to developing people uh, that you represent. Thank you, Barrister. Jude said a lot of things, and he said quite a few things, so I definitely can respond to all. Um, well, it, I tell you, it's going to be a big relief to politicians if we have a working country, if we have a working economy. There's no politician you meet that don't have a huge list of personal requests from, I need to do this, um, school fees, hospital bills, I want to celebrate my child's birthday. And it's because the system is not working. If the hospitals are there for free, they wouldn't need to come to me to ask me for money, right? So we are, both the executive arm and us, we, we have a big challenge ahead of us. Nigeria must work. We don't have any excuse. And now we're talking about the collaboration between these. Now we have the collaboration. 
We don't have any excuses. We must set Nigeria on the path to greatness. I can be talking a lot about bills. Um, Barrister Jide said something. What the people don't really care about what we're doing. They just want to know what's the, what's the need for us. They don't care, care about the exclusive list. They don't care about concurrent list. They don't care about what oversight is. They don't care.